Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. The formatting toolbar is displayed in Word by default because it's an important and frequently used tool. It contains many of the common formatting that you apply to your standard documents. So let's take a look at some of the most common buttons that you'll click frequently as you format your documents. So to apply formatting, you first make your selection to which you would like to apply the selected formatting. The first button, Style, allows you to select from predefined document styles like Heading 1, Heading 2, Heading 3. We use this more when we create our indexes and tables of content at a later point. The next button, Font, which when we click the drop-down displays a listing of fonts, allows you to choose a different font for the text. In the 2003 and XP and 2000 versions, the font faces are listed in their actual font names, so you can actually see how each one would look. However, in 97, the font drop-down just simply illustrated the names. They did not actually display how they looked. So it's a little more difficult when using the 97 version to determine, unless you know how the font looks, exactly what it will look like when you select it. Now after font comes font size. And using this drop-down allows you to pick a smaller number to shrink fonts or a larger number to increase the size of the font. Then we have the button grouping of B, I, and U. These represent bold, italic, and underline. You can click these buttons to toggle their respective formatting on and off. So if I wanted to bold the selection, I click B and it becomes bolded, or click it again to remove it. I will italicize it, and U will apply an underline. Next is the alignment section of the toolbar. This is really paragraph formatting and is more appropriately discussed in that section, but here you can select text in your document and easily apply to the selected paragraph either a left alignment, a center alignment, a right alignment, or justify, which aligns both the left and right sides of the paragraph for every line except the last one. In the 2003 and XP versions, you also have a button for line spacing. That allows you to set the line spacing for the selected text. This is also an attribute really of the paragraph. The next two buttons allow you to apply either numbering or bullets and that's typically used in lists. And what you would do is you would select the list items after typing them and click numbering to apply numbers to them or bullets to apply bullets to them. You can also click the button that's currently on to inactivate it and turn it back into plain old text. The other two buttons to the right are decrease indent and increase indent, which increases or decreases the entire left indent of the entire left paragraph. It is not the first line indent, and actually it is very rarely used. The next button that you'll see would be the Borders button, and here you can use the drop-down to select a border to apply. So if you wanted a line, for example, you could apply a bottom border. To remove a border, simply click and drag over the text around which the border is applied, use the drop-down, and choose the border that's called No Border. That'll remove borders. Also, you have the Highlight button. This allows you to select text and then apply basically a highlight. Once again, to remove a highlight, select the highlighted word, use the highlight drop down, and choose None at the top. That removes highlighting. The last button is Font Color. The font color allows you to change the color of the text in your page. If you click the little drop-down arrow next to it, 
you can choose whichever color you'd like to print the text in. You must click off of the text to deselect it and view the font as it really appears. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free.